Get ready to smile again with radio's home folks, Vic and Sade. Written by Paul Wright. Yes, it's time for Vic and Sade, folks. Brought to you by the makers of Crisco. And with them is your radio neighbor, Mrs. Beach. Mrs. Beach has been telling me that you women kind of have your hands full these days. Well, it's the truth, isn't it, friends? There's so much volunteer work to do for the war, even the children are helping out. I find I can't spend as much time preparing meals as I used to. And I guess you have that same problem, too. And yet, meals should taste especially good right now. Because when everyone's so tired, you kind of have to coax their appetites a little bit. Don't you think so? That's one reason I've been having so many fried foods lately. Honestly, with a little Crisco in your frying pan, you can have supper on the table in a jiffy. And then there's something about crisp golden brown fried foods that makes a man hungry just to look at them. At least it seems to work that way with my boys. And you know, you don't have to worry about serving your family Crisco fried foods. Why, they're just as digestible as if they were baked. It's always been such a comfort to me knowing how easy Crisco is to digest. Sometime, why don't you ask your doctor about that? When my daughters are helping me in the kitchen, they always like to use Crisco. Dissy says it looks so clean and wholesome when she spoons it into the frying pan. Crisco does smell sweet and fresh, doesn't it? That's because it's pure and all vegetable. With Crisco, there's no unpleasant shortening taste to spoil the good flavor of food you fry. I wonder if that's true of the shortening you're using now. Why don't you think about that? And when you do, well, I think you'll want to use Crisco for all your frying. It's so thrifty, you know. Why, you can do all your frying with Crisco for less than two cents a day. Why don't you try Crisco, too? And now let's visit the Gooks, shall we? Well, sir, the evening meal has been over only a little while as we enter the small house halfway up in the next block now. Sade and young Rush have just finished doing the dishes. We find them in the living room, comfortable and contented. Young Rush is speaking as we join our friends and we hear him say, Oh, treat you to the movie show, ma. Fine. <laughs> why, Georgia took me up on that quick. <laughs> oh, why not? It's very seldom gentlemen invite me to the movie show. Uh... You might possibly have to advance me a small loan. Uh, I figured there was a catch to it someplace. I bet by small loan, you mean I have to buy my ticket and yours, too. Well, yes. Hmm. What's on? Gloria Goldman, four-fisted Frank Fuddleman. Oh? I place my heart in thy rosy hands, part-time freight agent Lewis. Good. What you say we hop up and trot downtown right now? Okay. I'll slip into my little print. You'll be locking up the kitchen door and seeing if the window... Oh, Dan. Oh, Dan. I don't imagine it's anybody for me. I judge you offhand is Bluetooth Johnson. I'll scoot on upstairs, then. Fine. Oh, Willie, if Bluetooth's got something attractive to do, fat men playing handball at the YMCA or anything, you don't have to feel like you got to take Not at all. Me. Not at all. You and I got a date to attend the theater together. Well, all right. Hello? Yes? Why, yes, I believe she is. Just one second. It is for me? Uh-huh. Not Miss Tenbottom? No, it's some lady, though. I recognize the voice. Yeah. Some la da lady. Is Mama there, dear? Miss Apparat? No. Hmm. It's not Miss Brighton, either. Uh, hello? Yes? Oh, yes, Miss Cheevers. Just grand, thank you. And yourself? Uh-huh. Oh, well, I hope you and Mr. Cheevers said nice things about me. <laughs> yes? Oh, uh, this evening? Why, um, no. Hey. No, come right ahead. Oh? Well, dandy. Be delighted to see you and Mr. Cheevers. Fine. Fine and dandy. Certainly. Be looking for you, Miss Cheevers. Goodbye. Hey, what kind of a girl are you for a fella to make a date to go to the picture show with? Willie, that was Miss Cheevers, and she's bringing Mr. Cheevers. He's never... Of course, he's got that wonderful, important position down at the People's Bank. Not that that makes a speck of difference how important he is, but I just didn't like to tell him, no, they couldn't come because we were just leaving for the picture show. Perfectly okay. Perfectly okay. If it had been anybody else, even Fred and Ruthie, I'd have said we wouldn't be home. Forget it. Well, I believe I'll stroll up to the corner of Kelsey Street and see if any of the Wouldn't guys... Would you like to stay and help entertain Mr. Miss Cheevers? No, thanks. 
I bet you think your mother is an engine giver. Not at all, not at all. We can take in the half with Bijo any old time. Yes, maybe tomorrow evening. Fine. And I'll treat. I'll buy the tickets to no strings attached. <laughs> okay. Well, waltz on up to Kelsey Street. All right, Sonny. If any of my personal acquaintances telephone wish information concerning my oh, whereabouts. Oh, wait, Willie. Huh? Come back a minute. Oh. I got so kind of halfway excited talking to Miss Cheevers, I almost forgot what all she told me. Huh? I'm the dummy. How do you mean? We can still go to the picture show. Yeah? Oh, sure. Here's what Miss Cheevers said. First, she asked me if I was going to be home. When I hesitated and then said I was... She wanted to know if her and Mr. Cheevers could stop past and visit between 7.30 o'clock and 8. Said it twice. They'll leave prompt at 8. She made that clear. Why, you and I can... Catch the second show. Oh, sure, easy. We'll have an hour in between to spare. Oh, that's right. Where on earth was my head? Oh. I know what happened. Me hesitating. I felt uneasy and guilty and funny hesitating before I answered Miss Cheevers. And as a result, I let the main part of the conversation slip my mind. That's natural. Well... We'll take in the second performance of... What is it again? I placed my heart in thy rosy hands, part-time freight agent Lewis. Yeah. Uh, I felt like regular meanie giving you and your nice invitation to gate that way. Oh, I understood how it was. Uh, you're a good boy, right? <laughs> Thanks, Uncle Fletcher. Tell you what we'll do then. The minute Mr. and Ms. Cheevers leave at 8 o'clock, you and I'll duck up the chin. Stop on drinking. Stop on drinking. You want to answer it? I'll scoot upstairs and get into my little print. I'll almost guarantee you this is Bluetooth Johnson. Uh-huh. Hello? Yes? Oh, yes, Miss Trogo. Miss Trogo? Just fine, Miss Trogo. Thanks. Yes, I believe she is. One second. Hi. You're popular this evening, Mark. Yes. Hello there. Oh, goodness, yes, Miss Trogo. Got the dishes done. Why, gee, Miss Trogo, I'm having company. Yes, Mr. and Miss Cheevers are dropping past pretty soon. She just telephoned and... What, Miss Trogo? Oh, no, they're hardly staying any time at all. They're coming at 7.30 and leaving at 8. Yes. Uh, oh? Why, well, sure, Miss Trogo. Come ahead. Uh-oh. No, now you and Alvy come right ahead. Fine. That's dandy, Miss Trogo. I'll be looking for you. Goodbye. <laughs> Shucks. Oh, well, Willie, it just don't look like we were meant to take in the picture show this evening. Mm-hmm. I told Miss Trogo we were having company. She pinned me right down about how long they expected to stay. Not a bit like Miss Trogel to do that. No. Not a bit like her. No. Anyway, when I said they were coming at 7.30 and leaving at 8, she asked would it be all right if she and Alvy come by at a quarter past 8 and stayed till 9. You've done the right thing telling her to come ahead. Uh, I didn't see how I could tell her anything else, Rush. Nah. See, I've been urging her and Alvy to come call on us for ages. Sure. Might look terrible funny if I discouraged them stopping past with the excuse we were going to the picture show as soon as our other company... <laughs> I understand, Mom. I guess it's just not meant for us to go to the picture show this evening. <laughs> okay. But tomorrow evening, your mother will be the big sport and buy the tickets to the Bye Joe and stand treat for lemon phosphates in at the green. Well, telephone ringing, telephone ringing. It is Bluetooth Johnson this trip. Mm. Hello? Yes. Why, yes, I believe she is. One second. For me again? <laughs> yep. What on earth? Some lady... Yes? Oh, yes, Miss Phoebe. How are you? That's nice. Oh, just grand. Oh? Well, um, I'm expecting some people to... Uh, beg pardon, Miss Phoebe. You expect to be in the neighborhood around 9.15? Ha ha. Ha ha. Why, sure, stop by. You and Mr. Phoebe can only stay until 10, huh? Uh Uh-huh. Well, Grand. No, I'll be here. Dandy. Dandy. All right, Miss Phoebe. Goodbye. What Miss Phoebe is that? 800 block and West Elm. Oh. What's the matter, Mom? Are you all of a sudden going to trance, Mom? Well, there's something awful darn funny here. Why? Except for one thimble club meeting four years ago, Miss Phoebe's never set foot in my house in her life. Oh. We don't visit back and forth. Well, we don't even stop and chat when we bump into each other downtown. Huh. What do you make of it? Oh, they probably got to looking for something to do. And... Well, uh, look once. Oh. Miss Cheevers telephones and wants to come call in between 7.30 and 8 o'clock. Then Miss Trogel telephones and wants to come call in between 8.15 and 9 o'clock. Finally, Miss Phoebe telephones and wants to come call in between 9.15 and 10 o'clock. Huh. 
Isn't that a strange sort of a business? Yeah. Terrible strange. Well, probably just a coincidence. They happen. Now you take Smelly Clark's uncle's staff. He has more coincidences happen to him than anybody else on the face of the earth. Like the time he scored his lady friend at Peoria for... I pro- know. Huh? Thimble club ladies. It's a thimble club lady stunt. I don't catch on... What's plain as the nose on your face? Here's Miss Gook all alone except for her little boy. Mr. Gook's off on a business trip and won't be back for a whole month. Mrs. Gook must be lonesome evening. Oh. See? See? I see that. They hatched up a scheme. Mr. Miss Cheevers, Mr. Miss Trogel, Mr. Miss Phoebe are working on a regular schedule. They know about each other coming tonight. Why, I bet the telephone will ring again in a minute and it'll be some poor symbol club lady and her husband. Miss Gook, can we stop by and call on you at 10.15 and stay until 11? Uh, See? Yeah. <laughs> Plain as a nose on your face. Yeah. Ain't that sweet? Yeah. Ain't that sweet? <laughs> concludes another brief interlude at the small house halfway up in the next block. And so we leave Mrs. Beach and Crisco's Vic and Said until the next time. Don't forget to listen. Ed Roberts speaking. Wash your pretty things in ivory flakes. They're fast and gentle, too. Pretty things say soft and lovely. So it's ivory flakes for you. Undies, sweaters, and slips and nighties, too. Keep them looking lovely longer. Yes, ivory flakes for you. You know, I'll bet lots of you right this very minute of packing to go on vacation. Now, be sure you don't forget anything. Let's see. Did you put in the belt for your green dress? And did you pack your box of ivory flakes? You'll certainly want to take them with you so you can keep all your vacation clothes in good shape. Ivory flakes will help them stay gay and bright. Help them stay so nice you'll be wearing them again next year. Wearing them cheerfully, too. Why, do you know we washed a Waverly Glow Sheen play dress 51 consecutive times in ivory flakes, and that dress is still colorful and full of life. Yes, ivory flakes help colors stay lovely longer. Ivory flakes are the fast flake form of babies, pure, mild ivory soap. So don't risk any of your vacation clothes in strong soaps. Why, it'd ruin your holiday if your favorite outfit got all streaked and faded. Don't take a chance. For your pretty things, always use ivory flakes. Keep them looking lovely longer. Yes, ivory flakes for you. This program has come to you from Chicago and New York. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Mm.